you're having a wonderful day. Um, I'd love to talk to you just a little bit about salt. It's so amazing, you know, because as you have salt, of course, um, you have minerals in your blood and you have the ability to transport water. How amazing is that? You can only have life as a result of having salt. Salt causes us to really have electrical conduction in our body and that everybody knows that if you put a uh, probe into a beaker and you've hooked that up to a battery um, you could see that if you've got added some salt to the beaker um, you've got uh, an electrical current that can flow from one uh, electrode to the other from the cathode to the anode and it flows along uh, these ions and things and a charge can go from one place to another um, and this um, requires um, ions and ionization and we live in a sea of antioxidants and oxidation and uh, oxidation is as important as antioxidants are and we only have life as a result of um, anionic energy which is spinning uh, down uh, excuse me in and up um, with uh, cationic energy which is spinning down and out and these two fuse together and ionization is given off in electrons and salts uh, have to have, happen to have to be below a level of uh, a nine atom cluster and when they're in a smaller than a nine atom cluster um, they're acceptable to be in biology as long as they have their protein colloidal chaperone um, which is these uh, weak organic acids like humics and fulvics and these uh, uh, this uh, a mineral really should have its protein colloidal chaperone um, and then it should be smaller than a nine atom cluster when minerals uh, are crystallized they become in you know, a larger than their nine atom cluster and they begin to crystallize and become diatomic in their form but before that point they're in a monatomic state and that all element on the periodic chart does exist in its monatomic state and that in its monatomic state we have these elements in biology and these are the only minerals more or less that uh, humans can be uh, bringing in. For eons and eons of time past um, we've uh, been able to survive and survive because we had enough salts and you, when you look at a young fish and an old fish you can see they look pretty much the same uh, you can look at an old bull and a young bull and uh, they look pretty much the same but then such a disparity exists between humans look at a younger person and then look at an older person and we can see that a dehydratedness has occurred and the biggest disparity that occurs between these two is minerals most everyone really becomes fairly mineral deplete and that we can't get our minerals from licking a rock the very substances which are water loving uh, iodine, magnesium and fluorine are examples and they always depart wherever water is evaporated off and they depart with the water leaving behind little to be not much iodine, magnesium or fluorine in many of the salts that are come from inland rocks that are being ground down and being uh, given to people apparently to consume internally. Um, I beg that you would look into the question of whether a mineral has its amphotericness or not. And a state of amphotericness of a mineral can exist where that mineral could become a base or an acid and it has a negative and a positive pole tucked within itself and it could lend itself to become a base or uh, to become an acid. Um, and this is called amphotericness. We need to bring in salts and things which is amphoteric, which only sun-dried sea salt has, and only salts which actually has its phytoplankton with it and enzymes. When salt has its phytoplankton and enzyme, it is in its smaller than nine atom cluster. It is complex by a protein colloidal chaperone. And these are the kinds of minerals that everyone really should be having. Um, that it would be possible that you can just live on live food um, sometimes sodium 
could become slightly deplete because sodium's not really found in much. Even gorillas will go to self-medicate and they will eat into a rotten log um, and um, once they've eaten into the rotten log um, they can be getting sodium from this, you see. Um, so, um, and then salt licks and things exist. Um, some salt is going to be better than not having any salt at all um, and, but then the right salt is better um, but that you would have salt which is sun dried is really the only kind of salt more or less which I've ever uh, taught and put forward and I'd care so much that you're aware that all the United States pharmacopoeia uh, minerals are all diatomic element and that this insight which I'm sharing with you right now about minerals having to be more in their smaller than nine atom cluster is not necessarily something that's known um, in uh, nutrition and that could we not say that nutrition is uh, uh, the art of it is could be expressed by fried sticky fingers in the lobby of the hospital um, we could see all these things going on um, and even vegetarians could be junk food vegetarians and certainly people are eating high phosphate foods um, which is not life food but life food is low phosphate and high calcium and um, as you eat foods such as life food you can be free of any bile occludedness and the liver can be producing what it should um, as it neutralizes the churn properly and acid churn from the stomach and that a right pH can be got that uh, minerals could be absorbed uh, but then if you're eating a lot of tannins high tannin food and you could learn what that is pigmented food and things it could be binding with receptor sites and sites where assimilation could occur across the endothelial of the uh, lining of the intestinal tract but then if it's stained with pigment and things that cannot necessarily really be absorbed of mineral and then many much mineral that could be being brought in might not be able to be available because it be, could be being bound with ligands that's found in grain and bean which is grain and bean is not part of a life food diet because it's very high in phosphate at 20 to 40 parts of phosphorus to one calcium is extreme and high phosphate is really the ultimate cause of neoplastic condition in connective tissue. But anyway, that's another story. Um, people in the hospital, uh, uh, and then when they go in there, you would notice that some of the things that they do is to make sure the person has proper mineralization. At least that's one thing that is going on. But then the minerals that are being used are not amphoteric and are rock mineral. And granted that some mineral is going to be better than not having any at all, but then if you've got something which is more amphoteric and has actually come from the sea, um, this is really amazing. For ages, uh, bards have uh, made uh, salt piles and sold salt, and, and this has been quite an industry at the sea sh uh, seashore, um, and sea salt has been something which has been traded throughout all ages and it's sun-dried sea salt which I really do recommend um, anyway um, you could be uh, paying attention to more than just minerals of course but I am really care so much for you today to be aware how important minerals are um, I hope that you've learned some things as a result of this but anyway um, just please uh, be uh, in nature and be remembered of how beautiful nature is. Let's do what we can to mimic nature. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day as you're listening to this um, and I look forward for us to catch up with, to each other. Anyway, this is Dr. David Jubb. You've been listening to a program that's been all about salt.